cute. Okay. We can start now. Buenas tardes. Thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Alejandra Ceja. I'm the Executive Director of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for Hispanics. Thank you so much for joining us for our first Bright Spot in Hispanic Education Google Hangout. As many of you know, our White House initiative celebrated a historic milestone this year, our 25-year anniversary. And in honor of our anniversary, we launched a series of Bright Spots, a campaign where we could highlight the great work taking place across the country in support of our Hispanics, in support of educational excellence. I'm joined here today by a great colleague and friend, Leslie Acosta, from the Federal Student Aid Office. Um, she's going to be joining us today to help us kick off this important topic. We'll be also joined by our bright spots that are across the country. I'm really excited that um, they are joining us. Uh, the topic for today's conversation is on college access. We all know that the North Star goal for the Hispanic community is to make sure we not only have our Hispanic students graduate from high school but enter and complete college and several of the bright spots joining us are instrumental in making sure that we can keep moving the needle forward on progress for the Hispanic community. So I'm joined by the Career and College Clubs in California, College Spring in California, Metas program also in California, we're also joined by College Forward in Texas, One by One in Illinois, Rio Saldado College in Arizona, UNCW Centro Hispano in North Carolina, and Unidos Project in New Mexico. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we, we are going to um, kick off our discussion. Um, we're going to this is a conversation for us to learn from one another, to be able to leverage the good work taking place across the country, as you can see from the representation of Bright Spots that we have. I'm going to ask our Bright Spots to take a brief minute to um, introduce themselves and give us a, a quick highlight of the good work they're doing, and I'm going to turn it over to the Career and College, college Club. Club. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hello. Thank you for, for having us um, as part of the first Google Hangout series. I'm Karina Soto with uh, the Career and College Club program. This is our team. Um, hi. Hi. hi, everyone. Our program is designed to empower uh, middle grade students to succeed in high school, college, and beyond. Through our peer-to-peer -peer learning models, students motivate, inspire, and support each other in planning and preparing for higher education and quality careers. Since its inception, Career and College Club has reached more than 50,000 students, 71% of which are Hispanics. Research shows that waiting until junior or senior year of high school uh, for students to begin planning for college is too late. Um, yet, while there are many college and career readiness programs in the high schools, um, there are even fewer programs for middle grade students and even fewer that address the total child. We know and research shows that empowering students with knowledge, tools, motivation, and confidence to stay engaged in the learning process um, earlier puts them on track for higher aspirations um, in high school and beyond. We work closely with schools and districts to achieve this goal of helping students become personally responsible for their future success and have fun during the process. We look forward to sharing what we've learned and also learning the good works of, of our other bright spots today. Thank you so much. Um, let's turn it over to Centro Hispano for your quick um, intro. Good afternoon. Here we are at UNC Wilmington, Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm here with my colleagues from Centro Hispano as well as from the Office of Admissions. We are uh, doing everything in partnership. We are celebrating 10 years this 2015 here on campus as the only uh, Centro Hispano in the UNC system. So we are the only uh, university that has a dedicated space. Uh, our mission is to support the fast-growing number of students uh, applying 
enrolling and completing degrees here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Our dream and our mission is to become the university of choice for Hispanic students, faculty, and staff. A uh, great part of our programming is the MiCasa program, that is our mentoring program. Uh, definitely part of the bright spot uh, in that we have the local uh, college students mentoring the local high school students. So building the pipeline from, from the ground up, uh, our plan is to extend that on to the mentorship actually of the faculty to our college students. So we continue to build uh, a vertical alignment there. Uh, we have a great interest both from our campus uh, and that community in increasing the percentage of local enrollment. Um, uh, we are a, uh, a coastal county surrounded by seven other uh, very rural, mostly agricultural counties. So we do have a mission here uh, uh, as, the, as the coastal campus uh, in reaching out to the entire southeastern North Carolina and of course beyond. Uh, we also have students coming in from the Triangle area as well as from the Charlotte area. Uh, but we uh, continue to grow and look forward to building the relationship. Thank you. Unidos Project? Do we have the Unidos Projects folks? Good. Buenas tardes. Thank you so much for having us this afternoon. My name is Jennifer Gomez Chavez, and with me today is I'm Lorena Blanco Silva. I'm the communications manager for the Unidos Project, and we are broadcasting to y'all from uh, the beautiful campus of the University of New Mexico, which has served as the backbone organization for the Unidos Project. As you know, the University of New Mexico is a Hispanic-serving institution. Um, today, we are delighted to be sharing with you what we feel is a best practice within our state and certainly within the community, within our community. Uh, the Unidos Project is one of 13 communities that were that was selected in 2011 to focus on Latino student success. This was funded originally by the Lumina Foundation and uh, we are really excited because the Unidos project consists of working across our educational institutions, which include the University of New Mexico, Central New Mexico Community College, and our Albuquerque Public School System. Our goal together is just not working across educational institutions, but working with our community organizations. As we all know, that the community has many different initiatives that are actually best practices. So, in working with our community organizations, as well as our policymakers, to look at policies that can actually help increase Latino student success or who or which those policies are preventing our students from excelling in those different educational institutions. Um, we have four strategies that uh, work as a part of the UNIDOS efforts. They include uh, scaling up services that already exist. They also include working with pa parents families in the community to really bring forth information to help students uh, have better access to resources. There's also bringing back students into the educational system. So we know a lot of our, many of our Latino students leave our educational institutions for sometimes we don't even know the reasons, but some could be financial, personal, and other other reasons. But that one strategy looks to ways to bringing back students into the educational pathway. And then we have another strategy that is called removing the barriers that specifically look at systems in place that serve as barriers. And so that strategy really tries to focus on ways to remove any systems, any possibly policies that are keeping our students from having seamless transitions and success at those different um, educational institutions. With that, our goal here in New Mexico, particularly within our county, Bernalillo County, is to produce 55,000 more 
um, degrees, certificates, associate's degrees, advanced degrees for our Latino students. And we want to try to accomplish that by 2025. We look forward to sharing with y'all some of the best practices that have been working with our project. Thank you. Thank you so much for your leadership. On to College Spring. Hi, thank you so much for the invitation to join today. We're very pleased to be a part of this terrific conversation. You are here joined right now with College Spring um, and our Southern California team. Uh, College Spring is an organization that helps students realize their college potential by providing SAT test preparation, college application, and financial aid resources and information in order for students to be able to not only successfully submit an application, be admitted to college, but also be admitted to the most competitive college available to them. Um, and we do this by serving students in their school communities. Um, to date, we have served over 11,000 students in Southern California, Bay Area, and New York. Uh, we partner with schools and become just critical allies um, in the students' uh, goals in attaining college education. We are thrilled that our students are not only entering college at above national average rates, but they're also persisting at, incre at incredibly high rates, as the goal is not just to help students get into college, but help them get through college. Thank you. On to college. Hey, everybody. Hello from Austin, Texas. Um, thank you all for inviting us to be a part of this conversation today. I'm excited to get to learn um, from all of you, and it's it's exciting to hear all the great work that's happening all over the place. Um, a little bit about College Forward. Um, our mission is to coach um, motivated, underserved students um, so that they can receive the benefits of a higher education and a college degree. Um, we believe in serving a student until they graduate from college, so we begin working with them in their 11th grade year and serve them until they, they achieve that um, college degree. Um, we do this um, two ways. We have an access program which focuses on our 11th and 12th grade students. Um, we also have a completion program uh, which focuses on our freshman till graduation students. Um, we serve these students through a near peer model. Um, we use the AmeriCorps program. We have about 80 AmeriCorps members that serve with us each year in Austin, Houston, and um, in West Texas. Um, and um, they are um, providing coaching and individual support services to our students, um, not only to help them get into college and figure out how to financially um, pay for that, um, but also to help them um, continue to persist year after year in college. Um, our overall mission as an organization is to solve the problem of um, you know, opportunity for low-income first-generation students um, and to democratize this opportunity so that all students receive um, you know, college access and are, are successful in college. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, on to one by one. Hello. One by one was established in 2013 in East Moline School District 37 with a focus on closing the achievement gap for black and Latino middle school students as well as our ELL population and students from low socioeconomic backgrounds. We, worked we work primarily with students who will be the first in their family to graduate from high school and or college. One by One also helps young people to overcome barriers they may face in advancing their education. Our program has evolved tremendously in the two short years that uh, we have been around. In our first year, we visited two local college campuses and celebrated our members' promotion from middle school to high school. Since 2013, we have added monthly brown bag lunches uh, with community members who share information about their careers, leadership training three times per year, monthly motivational movies, as well as um, after school seminars that touch on such subjects as understanding how GPAs are calculated, how to use eighth grade as a preparatory year for high school, uh, financial workshops on how to pay for college, and we have an upcoming seminar on how to write a personal essay so that our students are prepared when it comes time to applying for scholarships. 
Knowing the importance of home support, we have opened up our college visits and after school seminars to our parents and guardians. And because we have bilingual skills, we're able to reach our parents who are Spanish speaking. We are very happy and very honored to be here and we look forward to learning much more from all of the bright spots that are here today. Thank you. Thank you. On to Rio Saldado. Hi, uh, I'm Kate Packer with Adults Achieving a College Education or Adult ACE. We're here at Rio Salado in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, Rio Salado College is one of the ten uh, Maricopa Community Colleges and one of the largest online public community colleges in the nation, serving over 57,000 students and 29,000 of them are online. Rio Salado also provides support for dual enrollment, military and reincarcerated reentry. Uh, incarcerated rather uh, reentry students and it's also one of the largest providers of adult basic education or as we call it college bridge pathways. Now among other uh, among our in-person uh, college bridge pathway uh, pathways population is adults achieving a college education program and our students are um, we recruit from among underrepresented adult students uh, who are also first generation to attend college. Uh, they are concurrently enrolled in their high school equivalency classes to earn their GD while taking college classes through Adults Achieving College Education. Uh, we've served over 800 students over the years and 57% of them are Hispanic. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for joining us. So last but not least, the METAS program. Thank you. This is Robert Gutierrez, uh, director of the METAS program at San Jose City College. San Jose City College is an urban commuter campus. Uh, we, our population is about 13,000 students per year and about 43% Latino students we are on the HSI. Um, the METHOS program coordinates instructional and student support services in collaboration with other programs and departments across campus. The Spanish word uh, METHOS translates to goals, so our goal is to increase retention, success, uh, successful course completion and persistence towards com completion of certificate, um, associate degree or transfer requirements. We offer a range of services that include academic counseling, which is proactive and intrusive, uh, summer bridge and a first year experience program, supplemental instruction dedicated to basic skills math courses where peer leaders are embedded in the classroom and facilitate workshops outside of class, uh, peer led team learning dedicated to STEM courses where peer leaders uh, facilitate workshops outside of class. Um, our two newest components to the METHOS program are a parent college and an undergraduate research scholar program that is in partnership with UC Santa Cruz. We also have auxiliary services such as calculator loans and textbook loans. So we serve uh, approximately 400 students per term and uh, we thank you for uh, inviting us to join us the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, at this time I want to welcome everyone who's viewing via, um, our live web webcast stream. Thank you so much for joining. We really encourage you to participate in the discussion by submitting any questions via the Google Q&A on your screen. You can also use um, Twitter and send us a question. Our hashtag, uh, our handle is at Hispanic Ed, or you can send us an email at whieeh at ed.gov. Now let's get started with our conversation. Um, Leslie, you are a senior advisor in the Federal Student Aid Office and one of the questions that we always get here at the Department of Education is what are those programs at the federal level that the department offers to help pay for college? Um, we have grants, student loans, and also work study. These are the three main um, help that the government, the federal government offers and um, I think everybody that it's in the process of filling out the FAFSA, which is the free application for Federal Student Aid. Um, we notice that the information that is in there, it would um, allow you to at the end receive these three help. Mm -hmm. 
Now we have two organizations that are with us, um, two of our bright spots that's focused specifically on our middle school kids. Um, and I wanted to turn it over to our career and college club first and then one by one to share with us why you're focusing on middle school students. Why do, why do middle school students matter and is it too early to be providing outreach to these students? So um, career and college club, I'll turn it over to you first. Hello. Um, so when we ask students in the middle grades if they aspire to go to college, um, so if you can envision a classroom, all of the hands or almost all of them go up. Um, but when you ask these, this question of students again, when they're in junior high or, or senior year of high school, not all of the hands go up. So something is happening from the time they get to, from the leap from eighth grade to ninth grade. And that's why um, you see a lot of uh, dropouts and in the ninth grade. And so when we looked at that research, uh, we knew that um, getting them earlier, um, sharing information with them um, in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade better prepares them to receive that information again in the high school. Um, like, like with anything, when you receive information a first time and a second time, it's not going to gel as well as if you have received it um, multiple times over a longer period of time. And so for that reason, uh, we feel very strongly that focusing on the middle grades um, and you know, that even with opportunities to, to focus even earlier than that um, should really be the goal. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. One by one. Hi. Um, what we notice with middle school is that they come in and sometimes as a middle school student, even in the lower grades, they can be straight A students and by the time they reach 8th grade, 7th grade, they lack that focus, their study skills are off. And so we decided after talking to students that um, and when they entered high school that they finally got that focus in high school. So we decided that it would be better to expose them to their, um, their transcripts, their GPAs, and their experience. And sometimes when you are a first generation student going in, you don't have that push from the home, someone to expose you to that. So one by one does that. We take our students to colleges. We take them to, we talk about GPAs. We bring people in that have a success story and let them hear that. And with that, we feel it builds a strong foundation for our students so that the minute they hit high school, they're better focused and they're off to a better start. Thank you. So, um, I think definitely what, what we um, talk about here is just the importance of a cradle to career education. So I'm really excited to hear about the efforts you have going on in our middle schools. And I want to transition over to the work that we are seeing um, being done in, in the high schools. Um, I wanted to ask the University of New Mexico if they could share a little bit about their Unidos project. How is this program helping make helping students make the transition from high school into college? So uh, with the Unidos project, as I had um, uh, talked a little bit prior, is that we are working across institutions, right? Because we know that not all our students start with us. In fact, you know, our high school, Albuquerque Public School System, many of our students then transition to our community college, uh, Central New Mexico Community College, and then come to the University of New Mexico. What we have done is, through these efforts, is looked at coaching as one initiative that we are sharing. So academic coaching, I think, is a new strategy that is occurring across nationally. But here in our community, we've decided to really invest our efforts in that. And what coaching does, it's uh, basically between advising and mentoring a student. And we uh, developed a coaching collaborative uh, between the Albuquerque Public School System, Central New Mexico, and the University of New Mexico so that we can have those uh, intentional, seamless handoffs uh, for 
uh, our students. And so we're really excited about that model that we have created. And I do want to mention that we are here at the University of New Mexico celebrating an all-time historic high of undergraduate graduation rates as well as retention rates here at, at our institution. So uh, things such as coaching is an example of one strategy that can help to increase the transition as well as retention and graduation toward degree completion. And the other thing to mention is that the Hispanic um, retention rate has actually it has outpaced that of our of their peers, either white or African American, at the University of New Mexico for the first time in history. So that's really great. And another thing that, as Jennifer was mentioning about the coaching, is that it's a lot of holistic coaching that's happening, a lot of holistic advising that realizing that the issue isn't just academic. So a lot of support services have been put in place, a lot of one-stop shops. Um, both at CNM and at UNM, are where students can go and get access to services, more over more than just academic, but really if they're having you know, a hard time paying their gas bill or their light bill, emergency services, that kind of stuff is being addressed as well in at those one-stop shops, which is really we found to be really really successful. Thank you. Um, we're joined by Rio Salado College, and they also have a program that focuses on helping our young adults transition. would love to turn it over to them to share with us a bit about the ACE program. Yes, the ACE, uh, adult ACE program uh, is one of, there are 11 ACE programs in the uh, Maricopa Community College District. And adult ACE is the only one that serves adults. So it's 16 years and older. And uh, these are students who normally they didn't grow up, let's say, hearing about how they will go to college and university at their dinner table. So uh, many of them dropped out of uh, uh, school due to financial hardships that their families experienced or other reasons. And uh, Adult ACE recruits students from the high school equivalency classes. And while they're working on their GED diploma, on obtaining their GED diploma, uh, they start college classes and working on that at the same time really helps them to solidify the desire to go on to college. So once they are done with the uh, college, uh, with the adult ACE program, we start exiting them from our program pretty early, about two semesters before they're done and it's a four semester program. So, and we prepare them, uh, teach them how to navigate the college system how to secure funds to continue their uh, their education, how to, um, you know, time management, how to work out support mechanisms. We also provide support mechanisms, but also to work with their family, because many of them are working adults and have a lot of responsibilities on their plates. So then they continue on to college once they're done with adult days. Thank you. Um, and please know that as we are having today's conversation, um, you know, please also we want to hear from the bright spots if they have any questions from us, in particular from from Leslie, who works in the federal student aid office. I know many of you are helping with FAFSA efforts, uh, the FAFSA completion efforts. So um, please know that we will also be taking questions from from you all. Um, I wanted to turn it over to Centro Hispano. Um, and ask about the partnerships you all have in the community there. And um, I know that you guys have also worked with uh, undocumented students. If you can just share a little bit more about the work you're doing in terms of college access in your, uh, with your organization. Uh, yes, definitely. So my name is Chris Montero. Um, I think that one of the strategies um, that we utilize that, that uh, creates success within our program, they're actually sitting right behind us. Uh, our Office of Admissions, we work hand in hand with them and also um, our College of Education. Um, it's a very interesting triangle that allows success within our program, but for me, um, as we are um, touching on mentoring Latino, young Latino students, um, I think that breaking the stereotype for us has been uh, something that's very important. Uh, bringing in high school students that for the first time they sit among peers that that um, not only look like them and think like them, but that also have similar goals in mind. So um, what we do is that we use the energy of our current college students um, and also work uh, very aligned uh, in, 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 in synergy with our faculty and staff. 
uh, to also provide individualized support for um, our high school students. I would add that we also have a collabor uh, collaborative partnership with the local uh, community. We have an a organization called the Latino Alliance. And this team is built up of nonprofits, uh, small businesses, public schools, uh, health providers, uh, etc., who uh, come periodically together to discuss issues that are relevant to the community. So uh, we know that we have a, a body of, of this network uh, around the community who are also spreading the, the good news of the work that we're doing here, uh, not just in the Wilmington area, but surrounding counties as well. And again, I go back to that. We are uh, a coastal town surrounded by a lot of, by a lot of rural area. So we do need to uh, use that mechanism to expand our voice uh, out into the, into the community as well. Well, know that there are various resources that the Department of Education offers. Um, Especially, we just came out and released a toolkit for mm -hmm. DACA students, and that's available on our website. Um, and then our studentaid.gov resource. Any other resources, Leslie? Um, apart from studentaid.gov, there's also the toolkit, and this toolkit is for financial aid administrators. Um, it's not necessarily um, specific for the students, but the students can also find answers to their questions there. Um, and they can use it. It's been very beneficial for, for all of their administrator when it comes to financial aid. So let's, um, let's focus a little more on college access and completion efforts. I'd love to hear from College Spring and the METAS program about your college um, access efforts uh, with your organization. So let's start with College Spring. So College Spring, if you could share a little more about the work you're doing on college access and completion. All right, good morning. My name is Christopher Hurd. I'm director of programs here at College Spring in Los Angeles. Um, what we do is we provide our high school students with mentors from uh, different local colleges to support them in understanding the process of transitioning from high school into college. Um, once they get into college, we also continue to work with the students. We have currently have a 77% persistence, uh, percent persistence rate of our students that go to college, um, maintaining their enrollment at the university level. We hope to get those students to return back to our program to serve as mentors for future high school students. So one, give our high school students that vision of someone that looks like them from their communities who's been in their shoes and has successfully made that transition to college to be able to give them that motivation, inspiration, and then also link them with the skills and resources at the local colleges that students need to be successful at the next level. Thank you. So one of the um the, the issues we'll be um, working with you on is the importance of the early FAFSA for the class of 2017. And I just want to turn it over to Leslie to share a little bit about the early FAFSA efforts here at the department. It's based on research and based on um, pretty much feedback that we have gotten from the community. Um, the president just assigned the opportunity of changing the deadline of filling out the FAFSA, which for um, students that are going to fill out the FAFSA for um, 2017 and 2018, they'll be able to fill it up as early as October. The reason why um, we believe that this is going to help students and families to be able to get ready um, prior, you know, and they'll be able to use for this the prior prior um, taxes. So they're, they're being called right now prior prior, um, which they can use their taxes from the prior year to fill out the FAFSA. Um, being able to do this is going to help students to get prepared ahead of time and not feel like they have to wait until January 1st uh, to fill out the FAFSA. Again, this is it's going to start for students um, 2017 and 2018, just as a reminder. So we don't think that we can go ahead and, and you know, this October, yet, just passed, but we can go ahead next year and start filling out the FAPSA since October. But, so this means that anybody that is a senior, they'll be able to fill out the FAPSA in October um, 2017. And I think it's a, it's a good change. Let's see how it goes. And um, we're hopeful that it helps many families being able to have the, their taxes, the tax information already in place, and they don't have to rely on just the estimate. 
So where can organizations get more information? Um, in studentaid.gov, um, if you go on the resources, you're going to find out information like the latest information um, of things that have been latest changes. So you can go to studentaid.gov, um, and on the resource section, you're going to find information about this in a specific. Thank you. They have a Q&A section there, just in case there's any other questions um, pertaining to this. Um, they have answers to that there, too. Great, thank you. I'm going to turn it over to the MECRASH program um, so that they can share with us their efforts on college access and completion. What we really try to do is um, build a strong relationships with the local feeder high schools. Um, and uh, we also have to co we collaborate a lot on campus with different departments. So. Uh, just like Centro Hispano mentioned, uh, these uh, strong collaboration with the financial aid office, admissions and records. We have uh, the uh, extended opportunity program and services uh, program. So there's a variety of offices that um, help us with um, fortifying our relationships with high schools. And so we're out there uh, doing outreach activities and uh, with you know high touch services with, with students. So. Um, our counselors are out there participating in the outreach activities, uh, program specialists, and joined, and we're joined often by admissions of records, financial aid. Um, Angela can share a little bit about the, the, the different steps that our students take um, before they begin at City College. So hi, I'm Angela, I'm the program coordinator. Uh, some of the steps that work our students towards the matriculation process is um, we have a series of workshops that we do in the high school. So our outreach specialist counselor, along with another department, go and explain how to complete the application online, uh, the FAFSA application, and we guide them on realize how how to know when they are a student from SJCC. Uh, the next step, the assessment, we divide it in two steps. Uh, first, since they don't, they are not aware of the importance of the assessment. We are providing a, a preparation, three-hour preparation uh, for the assessment. Le uh, this is by the English and math faculty. We prepare them. We give them a chance to do the 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 uh, trip test, and we guide them with um, overcoming anxiety. Then they take the placement test. They take it at the student assessment center. Uh, they took the compass, which is a web. Um, a computer-based tool, and um, so this is about to change because California right now it's uh, working to the Common Assessment Initiative uh, just to overcome the issues about um, students are not aware, uh, they, they don't know the impact of the assessment in their career, um, and after that we guide them to a customized orientation on college. Um, Followed by a meeting with the counselor where they can evaluate the, the placement test results. They can um, check their high school class scripts um, and maybe challenge this test in a non computer uh, uh, tool. And after that, we guide them to enroll in classes, uh, navigate the student portal, and so that they are ready to, to start, um, start the classes. And, I mean, and, and part of the intent too is really to uh, get the students placed into our summer bridge and first year experience program. Uh, so this uh, past summer we served uh, 55 students in our summer bridge uh, program. They're now in our FYE program, um, and uh, there was we had a 96 percent uh, passing rate for those students in the summer bridge program in their uh, uh, basic skills, math, and writing courses. So that's 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 you know we're in courses where typically 50% is about the passing rate expected for um, So now our goal uh, by the end of the first academic year is that um, uh, they 70% of those students successfully complete their courses as well as attain a minimum of 15 transferable uh, or degree applicable uh, credits. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And you guys have touched on something that's really important, and it's how we better leverage technology to support student success. 
And I want to turn it over to College Forward because I know that they've been doing significant work in this area. So College Forward, can you share with us how you're using technology to leverage student success and what are some of the strategies you're using to engage parents? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there are a couple different ways that we're lever leveraging technology, um, one of which is our direct services that we're providing to our students. Um, so um, obviously we know that young people now are a lot more on cell phones, on the internet, um, and they're accessible in a lot of different ways. So we're taking advantage of social media, of um, email and gchats, and all of these sorts of resources that we have to stay in contact with our students, um, whether they're in our high school program or whether they are on a college campus somewhere near or far um, from our coaches here in our office. Um, so we use a lot of technology and try to figure out the best way to um, stay in touch um, so that we can have that that one-on-one -on -one conversation um, to know how our students are doing and, and know what their needs are. Um, another thing that we are using um, technology for is really to understand, um, you know, sort of how are our students being successful or where they're not being successful. So about four years ago, we built out a um, database on the Salesforce platform. Um, it's, we call it Copilot in-house, um, and it really gives us, you know, it's where our curriculum lives. It really gives us a clear picture of how our students are doing um, as a collective, um, but also we can take a look at an individual student um, and see, um, you know, are they enrolling classes, what's their GPA, how they're doing, um, how many applications have they submitted to colleges, um, where they're at with their financial aid. Um, it's just an easy and simple tool that we can use, that we've spent a lot of time and energy on, um, that we use to really understand the needs of our students. Um, we're able to produce a lot of reports, um, and it allows us to really tailor our services to the needs of our current student population. Um, uh, another thing that we're actually in process of developing now is actually a student-facing portal. Um, this will uh, allow students to have access to kind of all the things that they need to know that are happening either on their campus, um, deadlines and dates that are important around financial aid or registering for classes, um, and a way for our coaches um, that support our students to communicate back and forth um, with our students. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we have heard in the work that we've done across the country with students um, is trying to learn more about those good practices that we can apply to increase um, the parent and family engagement. And I wanted to ask the career and college clubs and one by one, if you, especially given that you work with our middle school students, can you just share a little bit about um, work that you're doing to better engage parents? Um, and I'll, I'll kick it off to the career and college clubs first. Um, right now, we actually are not doing a whole lot when it comes to parents. Um, in the beginning of our program, we did, um, but it was very difficult for us to um, get parents um, involved with, you know, the exact work that we were doing as, as our program is laid out. Since our program is peer-to-peer -peer and student-led, um, there really wasn't an opportunity for, for them to be involved with the program. That said, um, because our program is peer-to-peer, -peer, um, we encourage students, and it's built into our program, that they share information with their peers um, through the use of a project. And so a lot of times, the audience uh, consists of parents. Can you hear me okay? okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so on the receiving end of um, capstone projects that the students put on, where they share information that they've been learning the entire academic year, um, that's where they receive the information. But aside from that, there isn't anything specifically that we do uh, to real parents in. So we'd be interested in hearing uh, any suggestions to that end? Well, we definitely, we definitely have some bright spots that are focused on parent engagement. Um, so we'll, we can make sure that we sh also share that. And it's available online on our website. And you can see all of the different bright spots that came in. Um, and some, some definitely have some strong strategies on parent and family engagement. I wanted to ask if one by one has um, any anything they can share in terms of how they engage um, parents and families? Come on up, put it in. 
We do have a Facebook page where we post in Spanish and also in English, and we have opened up our events to to all of our parents to come to college visits or our after-school uh, seminars. They're held at a time that sometimes our parents who work two or three jobs cannot make it, and so we rely on our students to take those experiences, those positive experiences, back with them home, and um, they'd like to share a little bit of of exactly how they do this and what it has meant to them. So I'm going to step aside if you would like to share. Go ahead. Morgan? Hello, my name's Morgan and I'm an eighth grade student. One by One has really helped me realize how important it is to keep your grades up and maintain them all the way through high school so I can get into a college and have your goals realized and get the ed education you want. <laughs> education you want. My parents have supported me my whole life with education, but they don't push me to where I can like get A's, straight A's. But they are very good parents and they support me. They're very involved and I love them with all my heart. Thank you. Hello, my name is Antonio Gomez. One by one has helped me realize how to start acting up uh, mature from now so I can reach my goals to reach colleges. And my family, they have been supporting me my whole life, and telling me to, to pay attention in classes. And, and, uh, and don't disturb others while, they're, while we're learning. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my name is Wal Omar, and I'm an eighth. I'm an eighth grade student. One by one has really helped me think about my think about my future. Because now I really know what I want to be. Because after I graduate college, I want to go to a dental school, and become a dentist after that. And my parents, my dad has always told me, school comes first, and then I can be an athlete later. But after. <laughs> uh, so Mrs. Malika and all these other teachers have really helped me focus more at school and think about my future more. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jessica Monroy, and I'm in eighth grade. And my parents have helped me a lot, especially my mom, since she's always the one who's picking me up and leaving me at all these events. And I really love them, and like I'm really blessed that I have such wonderful parents. And um, one by one means a lot to me, especially because I'm the oldest and I'm the first one for um, graduating college. And I hope to help my little sister a lot when she goes to college. And my parents always told me that um, that they will always look after me. That um, that some students will always have to work, but they say that I will never have to work because they will always have my back. Thank you so, much. Thank you. so we see that the kids are taking the messages home and um, and sharing and having the conversation at home and that's our a big step and very positive that will help our students to succeed so we love that about our students thank you, thank you. We really you guys have a bright future ahead of you keep striving and know that our White House Initiative created a Graduate Guide, and it includes a lot of great information on scholarships and federal financial aid. Um, so please make sure that you take a look. It's on our, available on our website in English and in Spanish, and some great information for parents as well. Um, since we have Leslie here, I wanted to just turn it over to you and see if there was um, any other information you wanted to share about the work federal student aid will be doing over the course of the next year and any resources um, or just additional information you want to share with um, the partners that are joining us today and the folks that are viewing the webcast. Well, the main thing that I wanted to leave you guys with is um, hearing the students um, speak about, you know, um, how one by one have helped them and their um, dreams and aspirations that they have. When it comes to obtaining a career, going to college, don't stop. For example, sometimes we wonder, like, if I don't have enough funds, can I really complete my education? There's, apart from the, the um, help that the Federal Student Aid has for students, there are other institutions out there that can help you get scholarships and get help to go to college. 
um, the White House initiative and the website it provides information where you can also find find out um, more information about DACA or any other institution that has um, that is providing scholarship for students to go to to go to college. Also, um, having in mind what you want to be since now, like those eighth grader, that, that's wonderful. Keeping in keeping in mind what and that that goal in mind and working towards that. Um, financial aid helps you to go to college and sometimes we think, okay, do I have to really attend a four-year um, institution? You can start in college and then transfer and that will help you deviate that cost from you know, the four-year institution mm -hmm. that is so costly. So you can do that and there's other ways that um, you can get information and help ahead of time to really prepare to attain that dream of attaining a career in graduating from college. Well, and the administration has um, worked on a college scorecard, so I hope you all know that that's a great resource available to students and families to help them find the best fit available to them in terms of a two-year, a four-year, and just knowing the difference between a private and a public college. Um, so some great resources available, and obviously the president announced his second chance Pell. Um, so we're excited about the opportunity to offer it um, as an opportunity for um, incarcerated young adults who will give them a second chance to be able to access a Pell Grant and, and afford some financial aid for, for them to continue their studies. And use our tools, studentaid.gov, you have YouTube videos, you have um, Twitter chats, it, information is available there for you. So use our resources, um, the White House Initiative website, as well as um, studentaid.gov, and you can find information there to, to prepare ahead of time. So I wanted to see if any of our Bright Spots have questions um, that they want to pose uh, for us. We have a few minutes left. Um, so just wanted to make sure that we also offer that as an option for you all. Um, and just really to, sh to say that we're just really impressed with all of the good work that you're doing. You really are, um, you really are a, a, a shaping the future for thousands of kids. Um, and we couldn't do this work without you. It's not just the responsibility of the federal government, as the president says, but it's the responsibility of all of us working together to help us increase college access and completion. Um, so wanted to see anyone have any questions? Hi, I'm Sherry Coder. I'm the Associate Superintendent in East Moline. And this is coming from a state. I don't know if all the participants here understand how school funding is different from state to state. In Illinois, there is um, a horrible problem with equitable funding. And it more seriously affects our students in poverty. So we have districts that are um, seriously underfunded, which makes programs like this very difficult to replicate. Is there anything the federal government can do to maybe push states to have a more equitable funding formula so that all children get a chance at a great education and that all children, no matter where they live, um, what their parents make, what their parents' educational status is, that they all have equal access to education? Thank you so much for your question. As you know, we are currently in the process of working on the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, and Secretary Duncan and, and President Obama are fighting hard to make sure that that le piece of legislation, which is our civil rights law for our schools and for our kids in this country, that it is representative of the needs across the country and across communities, that we can make funding decisions um, and not have to base it on by community, by race or ethnicity, but base it on the fact that we want all kids to achieve and we want all kids to have access to innovative programs, access to STEM, um, access to AP courses. So please know that you know, we're working closely um, with the administration to make sure that that reauthorization law is representative of the needs of our country. Um, and so 
um, that's something that over the course of the next couple weeks we're going to be working on. Hopefully we'll see some congressional action and hopefully we'll be able to ensure that that piece of legislation is reflective of the changing needs of this country. So I think we have time for one more question. Any other bright spot want to ask a question? Hey Alejandra, uh, this is Matt from College Forward. Just wanted to uh, ask a question if we have time. Um, we are aware that policy and legislative action can have huge influence on you know, what happens with low-income students and first-generation students in particular. And we are embarking on some policy efforts here in Texas. But I'm curious if there are things that organizations on this call as a group and those who are listening in, things that we can do to channel student voices to your level um, and how we can uh, share, you know, the important stories that our students have to tell uh, on a more national scale and, and if there's a way we can go about doing that. Thank you so much for your question. Um, during Hispanic Heritage Month, we launched a social media campaign, Latinos Achieve. We really wanted to use it as a platform where we could hear the success stories because oftentimes folks are, especially in the media, um, it's the deficit-based narrative that gets so much attention. And it's those stories of student success that often get overlooked. Um, so we're encouraging folks to continue to use that hashtag because it really helps us be able to highlight to the policy officials we work with what Latinos achieve, what does that mean, what does success look like, and to be able to elevate the voice of these students. And want to share with you that 2016 for our White House initiative is going to focus heavily on lifting the voice of students across the country. So if we are with you via a Google Hangout, if we're out in your community doing a town hall or a roundtable with students, we really want to make sure that it's the year of the student where we can continue to highlight the good work of Bright Spots and we can continue to bring attention to the work that students are doing to persist and to achieve. And I really do think that by elevating the student voice, we also help um, impact policy because you hear it directly from the students that are experiencing the, the, the ins and outs of what's happening in their school system. And, oftentimes the lack of resources in their community. So just know that it's definitely a priority for our office and our administration. We're going to continue to work to make sure that that, that student voice is elevated at the national level. Thanks for your question. So we are, um, we are just, we have a few more minutes left. I want to just thank my colleague Leslie for joining me today. I want to thank all of you. Um, I know that there was a lot of time and effort put into joining us for our first Google Hangout, so thank you so very much for helping us have a conversation about what's working in communities across the country. Um, it was a great representation by cities and states. Um, we really are looking for um, this to use this space to have these types of conversations and to be able to highlight what you're doing. Um, so thank you so much for being a bright spot in, in our country. Um, I want to thank everyone who's watching via live stream. Um, if you know of an organization that's doing good work to reduce the achievement gap for Hispanics, um, we'd love to hear about it. Please email us at whieeh.gov. Um, let me, let me do that one again. <laughs> um, please email us at whieeh at ed.gov. Um, and you can also find us at Hispanic Ed on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. Um, we look forward to hanging out with you December 16th. We are going to be joined by another group of Bright Spots, and we're going to be focusing on early learning opportunities. Um, and in particular focused on how we can uh, increase access to early learning programs for our Hispanic students. So thank you all so very much for joining us. I hope this was just as valuable for you all as it was for us. Um, and buenas tardes. <laughs>